everybody. Good morning to you. Welcome to Law and Crime. I'm Jesse Weber, and thanks for joining us. Big day today. We continue to follow the trial of doomsday cult mom Lori Vallow Daybell. Now, she faces multiple charges. She faces first degree murder charges for the death, deaths of her children, Tylee Ryan, JJ Vallow, as well as her husband's first wife, Tammy Daybell. And we have to remember that if convicted, the doomsday cult mom faces life in prison. She's also facing conspiracy charges as well. And really, we've been following this case from the very beginning. This has been a very interesting case to follow. Yesterday, court was dark. It is going to resume today. But to give you an idea of where we left off, let's talk about what happened on Friday. So jurors heard the testimony of a key witness, Zulema Pastenis. Anybody who's been following this case knows who she is. She is the widow of Lori's brother, Alex Cox, who is also deceased. Now let's actually take a listen to some of her testimony because I will tell you, I think this was pivotal for the prosecution's case. What was Tylee's rating? 4.1 dark. And on that same document under Tylee, there is uh, readings for Charles Vallow, correct? Yes. And what was his rating now? Three light. What was the rating for Melanie uh, Boudreaux? I believe that's down at the end, and I know the print's hard in the scale. The light is, lighting's hard in here. Three light. Okay. And what about Brandon? What was Brandon's rating? Three dark. And th this was based on teachings from Chad? Correct. Okay, let's talk about it, but I'm not gonna talk about it by myself because we have with us a very special guest, our very own Gigi McKelvey joins us from outside the Ada County Courthouse in Idaho. Gigi has been her eyes and her ears. She's been in that courthouse. Gigi, good morning to you on what appears to be a very snowy day as we resume trial again. Now, I want to talk about Zulema. My interpretation was she was a key witness, a key witness for the prosecution. If you can tell us what were some of her main takeaways from Friday, and more importantly, how did the jurors react to her testimony? Well, the jurors, again, had another day of kind of disbelief with what they were hearing. This is all very new to them, and you can tell they're very... Uh, their facial expressions tell a story. I think some of the biggest key takeaways from her testimony, you know, it seems like with every witness, it gets more and more devastating for Lori Vallow up on that stand with each one that comes and goes. With Zulema, one of the biggest things that stuck out to me is their theory that you had a very small window to kind of seal away that body before another spirit could enter it, which would be by burning and binding. So let me remind you, Tylee was dismembered and burned and JJ was bound when their remains were found on Chad Daybell's property. Very devastating stuff. The other big thing that stuck out to me is at one point Zulema asked Lori, where's Tylee? And Lori put her hand to Zulema's mouth and said, don't ask. Mm. Things like that are huge for this jury. It gives, you know, it, it tells the story that she's not worried about her children and clearly she hasn't seen them in a while. This was in October, November when Zulema came to stay, so a couple of months after the kids were murdered. And by the way, this is the first time this jury has really ever heard any of this. They're not like you and me, Gigi, who have been following this case from the very beginning. They're hearing these things for the first time. Now, I thought it was really pivotal when she said that Lori turned to her at one point and said um, what she said about JJ. You know, JJ's where, well, not even JJ's whereabouts, but that JJ was going to have a short life. You know, that's a pretty eerie comment to make when we all know what ended up happening on top of the fact that it was, you know, tying her to those comments. I thought the conversation about what, Ta excuse me, about what Lori was saying the night that Tammy was shot at. So there was a point when Tammy Daybell was actually fired upon. She wasn't hit. She wasn't struck. But walk us through what Ta um, Zulema said about what <laughs> There's so many different characters. Walk us through what uh, Zulema said that Lori told her on the night that Tammy was shot at. Well, actually, Zulema overheard Lori on the phone talking to somebody and said, idiot, 
he can't do anything right. Now, remember, he had missed Brandon. He had missed Tammy Daybell. He missed Brandon Boudreau. And so it's interesting because they tell him he's there to protect her. And he believes all this stuff 100 percent. But clearly, you still kind of get that when he doesn't do it right every time. He's an idiot. He's a moron. Kind of uh, there Lori's bus goes, by the way. She's arriving for court this morning. Um, but, you know, it's kind of that thing where when they need him, he's great. And then when he screws up, he's an idiot. He's a moron. It kind of reminds me of the light dark scales. Anybody who got in their way was dark. Anybody who was working against Lori in her mind was dark. Brandon Boudreaux, you've got her brother, <coughs> you've got Tylee. So it was a lot of little nuggets in that testimony that really just showed again the gravity of the situation and also to me her awareness of the fact that her kids to me are no longer on this earth that's how i took it as her words i want to jump back to zulema in a second before that you just said lori vallow daybell's bus drove by there's a reason we don't see her right she does she come into a different entrance into court she does, and there is a sally port back there that is very well hidden, so nobody is able to get any uh, video evidence of her coming into the court, no photographs, nothing. So she, we see the bus go by, and that, that's the extent of it until we see her come in the courtroom. I can't imagine she's waving to you, uh, Gigi, at any point. Uh, tinted windows, probably. Maybe but, not. Yeah. Um, let, me, let me ask you this. So She might be calling in an earthquake on me, you know? Well, let, <laughs> let's go back to Zulema for a second, because I understand she's going to be back on the stand, back on cross-examination by Lori's attorneys. Are they trying to suggest, A, that she had these her own fantastical beliefs and maybe she's not the most credible person because didn't she actually try to cast out souls with or cast out spirits with Lori Vallow? I mean, isn't that kind of a critique of Zulema in this case, that she was a part of this belief system? Yeah, she was very much a part of this belief system, and to me, the most active out of everybody in the group as far as these castings go. There's a big text exchange they read on Friday where Zulema and Lori know that Charles and JJ are driving in a tr truck in Texas, and they try to use hocus-pocus magic to make the truck wreck, mm. which in turn, and they acknowledge, would kill both Charles and JJ. So she was kind of Lori's right-hand girl when it came to these casting sessions and yeah. using the elements to do what they wanted. At one point in the text messages, and this wasn't testified to in court, but I've read them extensively, when they get to Rexburg, Alex tells Zulema they brought the dark one with them, and she mm. said, who? And Alex says, Tylee. And then he asks Zulema if she can call an inner tornado on Tylee. In other words, that would mean in their world to kill her. Now let's go into what we expect for today. So we mentioned Zulema, um, but aren't there family members of Lori Vallow Daybell who are going to take the stand today? And what are they going to say? Well, I don't know for sure that they're going to take the stand, but I've had sources tell me that both Colby Ryan, her oldest and only surviving child, as well as her mother Janice, are in town. They've been spotted. We know that Summer, her sister, is set to testify at some point about a jailhouse call between her and Lori. So it should be a very interesting day of testimony. It's going to be interesting to see Lori's reactions when she sees her son and her sister, who were a huge part of her life before her arrest. And so I think it's going to be one of those days where you're going to want to stick with law and crime for the latest. Speaking of that phone call, do we any do we know anything about the substance of that phone call? We don't know what what the contents of that phone call is. As you know, a lot of things have been kept under seal. Yeah. So we should sure learn today what what is so important about this phone call and why Summer is a, a witness for the prosecution. Well, let, 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 yeah, let's just talk about that. So Summer and Colby, generally speaking, from what we know of them during the course of this case, what could you imagine they are going to testify to that would be helpful for the prosecution? I'm not really sure as far as Colby goes. He was pretty removed from them during this whole time. and But at the same time, he was trying to text Tylee and was getting these uh, responses that didn't sound like her on the phone. And he was begging her to call. And then it just went silent. So and the other thing, too, is Lori was sending uh, Colby a lot of Venmo transfers on a very regular basis, over 40-something transactions over a certain period of time. So I'm not sure if they're going to get into that. But other than a 
just the lack of contact with the kids or maybe the last time that he saw them. He said that Tylee was very upset. She didn't want to move to Idaho. We all feel she went for J.J. because she knew Lori at that point was probably not capable of caring for him the way he needed to be cared for. Tylee very much loved J.J. and protected him. So it's going to be very interesting to see what comes out today. I think it's going to be a, a very interesting and explosive day of testimony because Zulema is still on cross, and the defense attorney said that might be quite lengthy. Yes. Do we have an idea about the schedule of the rest of the trial? You know, we keep hearing, oh, this is going to last eight weeks. Then we're hearing it's going to maybe be shorter. Any idea about how long this is actually going to last now? Well, the 8 to 10 week estimate was when death was on the table for Lori. We know now that's been removed. Still on the table for Chad, but for Lori, it's life in prison if she's convicted. So I think without having to litigate with, or to use mitigation specialists and bring in <clears throat> mental health professionals, along with the fact that they're not using mental health as a defense, I think it kind of shortens that witness list. And who knows who, this, who the defense is going to call. I've heard it's not going to be very many at all. So I think this trial's rolling along. We're, we're already talking to families. We've talked to the biggest players inside this group, other than Melanie Pulowski, who is Lori's niece, that was very much involved in this. So I feel like it's moving along at a pretty fast pace, and, and hopefully for the family's sake, for the Vallos, for Tylee's Aunt Annie Cushing and her daughter, who are having to sit in here day and day and hear these horrific details, that maybe this ends sooner than later and they can find some peace that this is over. Final question I have for you. Lori Vallow Daybell in trial, in court. How has she been reacting to these, um, you know, former friends, former associates testifying against her? Well, I have to say there was a big difference between how she, her body language was when Melanie Gibb was on the stand. It was a little more kind of judgy, jealousy sort of thing, look up and down. When Zulema came in the room, however, Lori seemed genuinely happy to see her. Mm. There were a couple of times she rolled her eyes. I was sitting right near her. At one point, Zulema said Lori ghosted her for a while, so Lori rolled her eyes and turned to her attorney and said, I did not ghost her. So, but still, um, there were some glances stolen. Lori watched all of her testimony, didn't put her head down. So it was interesting, the dynamic there. That is her sister-in-law. Zulema was married to Lori his brother for 11 days before he dropped over dead the day after they exhumed Tammy Daybell's body ironically so who knows if maybe she feels a little bit of of kinship to her still knowing that that was his his brother's wife but there was definitely a difference in her reaction between the two witnesses Gigi able to break down such a complicated case for us thank you so much I know you have to get into that courthouse but uh, stay dry in the snow and great reporting as always thanks Jesse all right, everybody. So I want everybody to stay here on the Long Crime Network. We have a lot to cover. I am signing off, but here's the good news. After the break, we have another trial for you, another mom on trial for murder. It is the trial of Letitia Stouck. If you haven't been following this one, I really encourage you to do so. There is a lot to break down there. We'll be right back right after this.